Ta -da. This guy's going. While I wait for this over here. And then I hit mute and then we get going. Ta -da. <laughs> mute. All right. Hey, welcome to Harmony Chat. Uh, today we're going to talk about African music, the African imagination in music. M most music. Uh, has really, really strong roots from African uh, music, traditional African music, which is really fantastic. I want to put a special thanks to uh, Pybox and Slack for letting us use their tools to communicate, educate, and collaborate. So thank you guys for, for that. And uh, today, uh, I get to be your presenter. So I have some cool stuff that I'm going to share with you. And we're going to listen to some awesome music and see where that leads us. All right, so you guys are seeing the screen, correct? Awesome. Um, I'm I'm not going to get fancy with kind of uh, breaking this out into an, an actual slide presentation because I want to just be able to see and, and we might go back and forth. But first thing that we're going to talk about today is the um, African imag uh, Africa, uh, the African imagination in music. And this book was recommended by Tony. I, I got it when. He was off on one of his rants and he just picked it up and said, well, hey, what's the name of that book? Really interesting. Oh, my gosh. There's so much incredible information in here. Um, it, I, I'm not done with it. Uh, it's a it's a very uh, a deep intellectual book with a lot of research. And there's just so much information. It's more like it's almost like an encyclopedia to have as a reference guide Um and 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 going back to because there's just so much information here, um, and the the uh, the author, uh, Kofi uh, Agawu, is uh, is a incredible uh, intellectual. And uh, it, it the the when I mentioned that the book is 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 really deep, there's a lot of language in here. Um, when I you know, started reading it, I'm seeing all these words like ethnographers and ethnomusicologists and heterogeneity. I mean, it just, it, uh, I couldn't even, I, it was difficult to, to, I had to stop and read it twice and, uh, and then try to, as I butchered, uh, uh, you know, trying to pronounce uh, these words uh, themselves. And then you mix that with a lot of uh, uh, African terms in 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 probably uh, Ugandan or, or you know ethnic tongues, uh, it, it it starts to get a little <laughs> a little deep, and you really have to stop and and, and think it through. When, especially when I started getting into instruments, um, and there's this whole section on on a variety of instruments, and these that that uh, that you know have evolved, and uh, it, I'll get into that in a little more detail, but. So that so for example, they would have names of drums, and uh, and there are all kinds of different drums, but they would name them after the sound that they make, like a doom bop or a bog bog or boom boom. I can't pronounce the words, but it was really fascinating to see how how they they you know communicated the type of drum that that they were uh, working with working within their hierarchy of sounds uh in a in a i don't want to say more primitive but a, a, a more fundamental kind of orchestration of how they would uh, play with each other and so forth so anyways this guy was really is is really deep uh very very uh very uh intellectual uh perspective uh and and uh in-depth research uh on african music uh there's a there's a link that uh is a little more detailed uh or, you know for more information about him and that's in the in the presentation uh one of the you know kind of the first things that i thought was really interesting is that you know so much of our music uh uh and european music uh western music has been influenced by by uh african uh music especially since around the turn of the century, 1900s. Uh, but in their culture, they don't really have a word for music in their language. They have all, you know, rhythms, songs, be, you know, all the other terms, but they haven't, they didn't really, uh, 
uh, in their in their in their early they they do now that they, they know what music is but but they they would refer to it in a, in a very different way keeper of song or the song master there's a there's a couple specific terms in, in that they use in the book um but their their music um they didn't really have like we have a musician that gets paid to be a musician to go entertain people that kind of a thing and there was certain a certain amount of uh you know people that were uh you know more knowledgeable about songs or had maybe a little more skills in in certain instruments or 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 voice and that sort of thing uh that you know got a little bit more social ranking out of it but everybody participated in music and it was it was more like a religion without calling it a religion. It was their part of their spiritual connection and communication. Music was, you know, for uh, weddings and funerals and um, people coming of age and, and, and certain, uh, uh, certain rites of passage or getting married, those kinds of things. Um, so it was, it was part of, it was, it was a cultural experience more than, it was like, hey, let's, you know, let's get together and jam and play some music. It was just, it was part of how they lived. It was really, really uh, fundamental. You know, it was interesting. We were talking about uh, uh, cosmic music and meditation and and tuning into uh, our, our spirit from a very calm, tranquil space, you know, the, the, in, in our last session. Well, they would be doing the same thing in a in a much more uh, aggressive rhythmic uh, connection, which I, which I thought was really fascinating. Um, the uh, the drums, of course, they were they were used as uh, signals for different things. If somebody was in danger or communicating uh, activities that might happen, uh, you know, come on over, we're having a we're having a, a barbecue <laughs> kind of a thing, uh, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, and 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 also uh, uh there th they would use them to kind of announce uh if somebody you know a king or a, a royalty or uh mm -hmm. dignitary was uh was present um so that those were kind of the highlights of what i what i got out of uh the book um he broke down music into three categories which is really the traditional music uh weddings funerals signals those kinds of things that we just talked about and that's where a lot of the the rhythm rhythms and distinct characteristics that we look to and say well that's an african uh you know a beat or an african phrase that kind of a a style um uh, and, and timbres and inflections uh, in the actual music. That's really found more in the in the in the traditional kind of a uh, category. Then around 1900, when the guitar was introduced um, to uh, to Africa, and this was right around the time that uh, Europe was was trying to understand the. Uh, the African culture and the various instruments and those kinds of things. So they were like, oh, there's all these instruments. They came up with a naming convention for them, which was uh, unique so that they could be able to communicate that, uh, you know, in, in more European and English terms. Um, right around that whole time period, that's when popular music, more of a, a, a pop social folk music kind of started to emerge. And that's, that's closer to what we, uh, uh, we would hear today in the, in the, in the radio or more popular music uh, that's, that's evolved in a variety of different forms. Um, and a lot of those influences of kind of merging kind of, you could say their version of fusion where they were fusing kind of the, the folk, uh, folk uh, European folk music with uh, traditional African music to kind of come up with more uh, social dance uh, kind of kinds of music. And then, throughout this whole process also evolved what they would call the art category and that's more written so you know orchestral music for example we we write it out and then we would play by play by instruments so as as uh you know uh africans uh, uh became more schooled in, in understanding of of those types of uh, uh of methods for communicating music that whole uh, scene evolved as well now most of us are pretty familiar with the basic instruments uh, and a lot of these are more modernized uh, uh, instruments uh, of Africa. Um, the djembe, 
the Mbira, the Doombak, uh, Balafon, or the, you know, their xylophones, because there's like really a whole category of the xylophones uh, and that sort of thing. And the Kora, that's a, you know, traditional or the Shakare, the Ikwi. I haven't really played much with that, but the uh, Ogogo, uh, I've done a lot with that in the, you know, the percussion uh, space. But one of the things that I thought was really interesting, this is one of those interesting words that stuck out to me was a corpophone. corpophone. That's really our body. Slapping, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's all these other sounds that they would make um, outside of their voice, but their body was that was the instrument. So I thought that was a, a, an interesting, uh, you know, instrument I know I didn't really think about before uh, I started working on this exercise um one of the things and you're going to see this when we when I play some of the some of the videos if I can find them um is because of the uniqueness of of the 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 language itself there's so many interesting rhythmic patterns that you can extract uh, uh from just from from what they're from what they're saying uh, it's 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 a lot of syncopations similar to how we would in 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 uh, in modern rap. There's a lot of syncopated rhythms in in how people are are, are presenting uh, the English language. But a lot of that those you know intricate interesting rhythms are found in the in the voice and they they uh, the the core uh, well the seed of where all of these uh, experiences uh in music came from it's it, it all evolved from from uh, uh from language and 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 they're sharing their their culture and their stories uh there's uh 800 to 2000 dialects in the um uh, in the african languages which is pretty fantastic um and i actually there was some other things i was adding to this uh to this slide i didn't i didn't finish it but overall uh there's a lot of unique instruments that uh, evolved. And I, I, you know, you saw some of this in the pictures over here. I was going to uh, grab a few more pictures and I might add to it later uh, that are, that are, you know, there's some beautiful pictures of the Cora and so forth. Um, now for us as composers, uh, I put some links to a few different libraries. I don't know how many here have the West Africa from uh, native instruments. One, Anybody else uh, to Sharon, do you have it? I think I do. Well, Carl, you have it. I'm trying to look at my list here. Miguel, do you, do you have that one by chance? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I haven't seen it, but I think so. Uh, Stuart. Okay. This no. is a this is really a, a great library and has a lot of uh, kind of uh loops and and uh and and uh and little kits uh with the various instruments um uh, uh but it wasn't as easy for me to take and and I have they have a, a Cuban one they have several of the similar libraries in the in the native instruments and I included some other uh, some other uh libraries that I found online doing a quick search but one of the things that's hard is I go and I I was trying to trying to create this map between uh, what I would hear as a kind of a traditional uh, song that they would be singing. I go and try to find that in the sample library, um, and it was really difficult to to try and find those maps because you know what I you know would find on YouTube of a, of a group playing they might be from one part of Africa where, you know, some of these other uh, rhythms are pulled from a different part. So it, it's really, it's so diverse. There's so much information, uh, so many variations, I should say, uh, that it was really hard to create that kind of a map. I wanted to spend more time and, and, and put that piece together for you. But um, but if you get a chance, play with those various rhythms and and then compare them in the, uh, in the, in the videos that we're going to take a, a look at. There are uh, quite a few uh, different uh, uh, songs and that from from for different purposes and 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 kind of different periods of time, sort of. Um, you know, of course, they're all uh, 
uh, modern, you know, the, the, the older tradition stuff is uh, traditional stuff is, is a more modern interpretation. Um, uh, you know, for example, one of the, one of the singers was talking about how she sings very differently now that she has a microphone. She's still singing in a microphone around the people in, in, in a, in a small group, uh, like, you know, in a little square and they're, they're playing instruments and she, but she's singing through a microphone. That's very different than if they're sitting in a circle, uh, you know, in a more kind of tribal type of a setting, uh, and, uh, and, and, and singing in that kind of a, a, a situation. It's just, it's, it's just a different way of, uh, of, of singing and expressing, uh, their, their music. So, so the, you know, it, it's just going to be different, but anyways, we're going to, we're going to take a listen to a few different, um, pieces of music. Uh, and these are documentaries that I, I'd encourage you all to take, uh, take time to, to to listen to the whole thing because they really cover a broad spectrum it's a lot of time i mean each of them is like an hour or two uh some are some are pretty long uh but there's a lot of great information in there to to look at and there's some interesting stories so i'm going to start with the first one here um and one of the things that let me see if i can go back so this is telling a story of this guy right here um he wants to be a professional musician, and then it kind of ties in with this other guy who's a jazz pianist. So I'm just going to play a little bit of the of the music itself. And as you're as you're uh, listening to this, think you know, listen to the rhythms in in the drums and the percussion, and um, you know, it, there's kind of a I, I don't want to say a trance, but there's that that uh, very consistent. Uh, uh structure in, in in a lot of the music and 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 the nuance of the of the variations so here we go a little bit there we go europe all over the world the day that we Are you guys hearing this okay? So they they go on um now if you notice there was a there was an edit because <laughs> there were two different pieces of music that were actually shared there and and they were both uh, you know kind of had a different uh, you know different rhythms associated with them but you though each of those sections would you know uh, those little um jams if you will they would go on for a long period of time with a very it's it's not like an ABA form necessarily. It's it's kind of a it's a little it's a noodle within a scale or a and so it's it's a different kind of uh, approach. They would be playing a lot of repetition. There's just a lot of repetition in that. Um, the second. Let's see if we can. Where was the other one that they went into here? Oh, they. So this was a. a Oh, here we go. Let's let me see if this is the right one. So this guy is a jazz uh, was a John Coltrane or mm -hmm. jazz Charlie musician Parker are always with me. And he's kind of then playing jazz there are along the classical with classical musicians like Bach, Ravel, Debussy, Chopin, Stravinsky, and Bella Bartok. And so, uh, this is the best example to show. So I'm going to move on to the next one. Um, this one, uh, I think when it starts off, it's it makes it a little easier. Um, and so each each of these each of these uh, uh, videos will uh, documentaries will go into a lot more depth, and they tie it in with the stories and 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 a little bit more of uh, of origin. But this one's interesting because it it showcases the xylophone. <laughs> I'm 
as you can see, there's there's a lot of repetition over kind of a, a little a little theme or riff that they're doing. And this is obviously, you know, uh, more modern as of, uh, you know, 1989, <laughs> as opposed to some of the more, uh, you know, uh, tribal or, or community uh, driven types of uh, music that they would sing in their in their local communities. But this is, you know, you know, a little a little more modern anyways. Um, this go this uh, documentary goes into a whole bunch of other uh, let's see if this is another good example here. So now you hear how you hear how the the voice has these beautiful rhythms over the and and melody over this little this little this little groove going on here. So the source for much of Salif Keita. So they're playing these little rhythmic things that are going on within the, you know, that there aren't any real, there aren't any drums in that. But there, it's a lot of the same types of uh, of of rhythmic patterns that are kind of going over and over. And then they're they're you know doing this. I don't know in in, a, in Brazil they call it fade, which is like you know kind of improv. You know, uh, in in their case, it's more it's more that's more like a ballads. But the, it's these uh, you know little raps or free. I guess in 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 our in our culture uh here uh with rapid be more like freestyle <laughs> so they're they're going off uh and 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 singing these these beautiful lyric uh phrases over over these uh pattern driven types of uh melodic and, and harmonic uh things that are going on so let's see if we go oh this is the lady with the uh with the microphone she's talking about that so let's let's take it this too Hey, I'm Beaucoup de vaches. Des beaucoup d'autres choses. Je ne connais rien que. It isn't overly predominant here, but do know if you you noticed, people uh, started really participating in in clapping rhythms along with it. Now, in other segments, they're going to do more of that, but uh, but you know, a there's there's that you know community of wanting to participate. Um, we do some of that here, but not as much, you know, with body slaps and that sort of sort of thing. Um, 
let's see. Uh, let me. I want to get to the main to to the kind of the main guy that we're gonna that we're gonna explore today. Um, there's a guy named uh, Felakuti. Has anybody heard of Felakuti? Are you familiar with him? One, two. I can't see. The, let me change this to the other. And then, then I can see everybody. So, oh, there we go. So, who hasn't heard of Felakuti? One, two, three. Okay. And I can't see Miguel's hand. But, um, anyways, he was like uh, Bob Marley of uh, of Africa, and very political. Uh, they, you know, there was, uh, he has kind of an interesting story. Uh, he had multiple wives and he had a whole compound with, uh, this beautiful, you know, think of, think of Prince's, you know, Paisley Park. He had pretty much that, uh, kind of a thing. Uh, but he, you know, he studied in, 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 uh, in, I think it was France or Europe and, uh, and created, uh, Afrobeat, uh, the style of music, and uh, it's an it's he has a really interesting story. There's a part one and a part two, um, and I think they're you know this this one's only a half an hour, I, so I think it's about an hour hour and fifteen minutes by the time you watch both of them. Interesting story. Uh, they actually I found out afterwards as I was researching this, they've done a Broadway uh, uh, show around his uh, around his life. And it's fantastic music and really, really talented performers. Uh, but he uh, he had some really interesting. He did a lot with these various horn riffs and and then his his social political message. So uh, I don't know exactly where I am in in this particular thing, but we'll start listening to a few of these cuts because this is this is going to be our assi assignment today is to listen to uh, Felicuti and create a piece that is in the style of what he does so there's a lot of you know drum uh patterns and and bass and uh, uh guitar riffs along with these these horn lines that go on and we're going to do a two and a half minute version of what he would do sometimes for you know all, like an hour <laughs> he would do really long jams and i i i think i told this story before i i worked with this uh guy that was a, a street performer in the twin cities and uh came up there doing a gig playing hand percussion and they had a you know a drummer and a, and a bunch of other percussionists and and bass player guitar and so forth and he'd get out and sing and went crazy and he, just, he was a fantastic entertainer um but we played in a four-hour night we played two sets we just played two hours one song <laughs> And it kind of had a few morphs into it of different lyrics, but then the other the other set was another song, which is really tough if you're a percussionist because your hands are like ready to fall off. But, uh, anyways, uh, that that in that spirit, it was that that kind of ongoing, you know, feel it and 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 connect to that uh, uh, to to the uh, almost to the spiritual side of of what 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 is going on musically. All right, so let's take a listen. He was very, very strict about Riazas. Go to another person. Top of the road on this side, people, they walk up. Office, they walk up, labor, walk up, walk up. Oh. Mother Fumilayo Ransom was a teacher, uh, a prominent aristocrat, and a feminist. Let me get to some more. While his father, uh, Israel oh, Ransom Kuti, was an Anglican preacher well, and the kinda... first president of the. So there, he formed a band called Kula Lobitos. With his skills in playing the tana uh, in the early go, horns. At a party in London, he met his first true love, a young Nigerian Not girl studying here. to become a secretary. Underground London craze for African dance music. In 1962, Ramile Kun gave birth to their second child, a boy named Femi, 
who would grow up to become heir to his father's throne. I knew from a very early age. All right, I'm not going to get into the the, the um the uh it's uh it's difficult to follow there. Um, I, 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 I lost my bookmarks, unfortunately. So I'm going to go over here to, oh, actually I have Spotify right over here. What am I doing? I'm going to get this over here. Boom. I'm going to pull up. Uh, there we go. All right. So for our, assignment what i'd like you to do is to go and check out uh this guy right here and i'm going to pull up some more of his music but he has a really fascinating story and and i'd encourage you the links are in the in the powerpoint and i'll and i'll share those uh, uh with you here in a second as well but one of the things that uh i mean just we'll we're going to listen to more specific uh tunes in here and then uh, and that'll give a clearer idea of what what we can try to emulate for a composition this week A joro jar, a joro. Tell him to go kill. A joro jar, a joro. No break, no jar, no sense. A joro jar, a joro. So as you can see, it's a twelve-minute song, <laughs> which is kind of long. Uh, but he'll get he you know gets a nice groove going and it, it it's it's a whole vibe it's a whole experience kind of like going to you know Grateful Dead had their own it's like an experience they would just kind of jam and and that's what he really he brought out in uh, in what he was doing here so that was Zami I'm gonna go through a couple more of these cuts and then you guys can. So just try another. You starting to get the style. It's got a nice little groove, and then these little riffs that go on top.
Now, when you're writing your cue this week, um, pull the elements through. Don't try to solo because one of the things that sucks and it's really hard to do with uh, library instruments is to do a jazzy solo. <laughs> so you, you don't have to go there. I'm saying pull out the rhythms and and the groove ideas because there's just some beautiful groove ideas uh, going on. And, and then the riffs. And you, it's easier, it's, it's relatively easy to do the riffs with the horns, but difficult to do the solos. So if if uh, if you're on the verge of getting cheesy, <laughs> um, just pull back and, and just just do you can just fill in with riffs. It's just getting a nice little groove. And, you know, these these were these are long winded solos that are another 14 minute song here. And they're these are all little little jams that are, are pretty long jams and so forth. And that was kind of the style and, and, and the vibe. Uh, that's when you know this was about the time where you know in the time frame when Dr. John and and the whole New Orleans thing was exploding, and they did the same kind of thing. It was just kind of you know jam, long jams. Uh, uh, anyways, um, but I I think there's some really fun uh, uh, you know elements of of traditional African uh, rhythms in here, along with some fun kind of hip, more modern. Uh, uh, stylistic uh, elements that that will be fun to work with for a composition this week. Um, does anybody have any any questions about this? You got a couple of them. Fire away. I, I... please uh, go. First of all, most of the songs are based on pan minor pentatonic. It sounds like to me. Is that true or not? Ah, uh, very very possible. I didn't. I didn't get into the to analyzing the scales that they were uh, using. Yeah, it's kind of a uh, funk adjacent, but not you know, right? Knows, but it's uh, but it's definitely got a lot more going on in a different way. Um, is there uh, is is there a a a hard beat to it, like like a clave or not? Um, yeah. I wouldn't. Say, it's not necessarily a clave. It's a. It's a kind of a different variation. But it depends on which, you know. You can you can go through when you go through on on Spotify. There's more actual pieces where you can kind of analyze and break it apart. Um, there's a lot more work to 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 you know to kind of pull out that style. But there's um, you know, there's there's definitely some variation. But very much like uh, Latin music, really, it all has a you're 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 at you know has a clave to it it's uh it's a different it's a different variation of the same thing but the clave is still part of it it's i think of it more of layers right so i mean i i put a link to a youtube video of a 20 piece band doing uh uh with uh, i think it's uh Fila Kute's uh uh grandson uh with a chilean afropop band and it's i mean it's probably good to watch because there's like multiple percussion there's like five percussionists all doing simple things but collectively it sounds more complex and the drummer is really solid right the drummer is pulling it together and you know putting in those breaks along with the form and there's a huge horn section with you know just pumping out the the, the this this the this rhythmic kind of horn section things and then they do a bunch of solos so i mean it reminds me a lot of being in these uh funk jam bands back in the 70s we exactly. thought we were more we weren't this but we were the same structure in terms of like hey man we've got three three chords and we're gonna like what is the uh, 20 minutes right is there a connection between if what is the connection between the traditional um african heritage and the modern music i i think it's the layered layered percussion on top of drums right and i think the modern is the drum kit yeah, that's oh, what and I'm... the guitar and the guitar and a guitar. The, the guitar uh, yeah. really transformed yeah. the, the whole guitar. African music experience. Yeah, the guitar is a rhythmic influence in this in this particular case, right? There's two guitar players in this video I show, and they're just doing a, a a pattern. They might as well be drummers, but it's it's a guitar player, right? And uh, and the bass guitar, I guess, as well. Yeah. Yeah, and it and if you listen to the traditional stuff, it's the same kind of thing. They're playing they're playing patterns over and over and over again, and then they're kind of building on it and putting little little sparks here and there. But it's 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 more of the connection of them all playing together that experience. And you mentioned the funk bands; those evolved from this style. 
when sure. he he brought this over to the United States because he did a th this that is the next generation of what evolved out of out of this because this this evolved out of connecting jazz with with you know the, the more African uh, flavored percussion. But that uh, so it, it the Afro beat went into the Afro Cuban and then, it, you know, it's it evolved and really had a big influence, uh, I, I think, uh, from what I've uh, experienced in music uh, in in kind of setting the stage for more of the funk stuff that came later. Well, Afro, Afro Cuban has been on, going on since the 40s, since right. the 80s. Yeah, well, and, and that case, see, it's it's like, you know, I'm here, you know, boasting my barambao from brazil the other the other day i was showing you guys that that's from africa <laughs> yeah. you know that was their one string instrument that came way before that <laughs> um so it's uh you know these origins kind of infiltrated to the rest of the world i think that from what i've studied so far i think that that the african uh musical uh, cultural and rhythmic experience is is found everywhere in the world and 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 everybody else's music western music has all been significantly influenced by it especially in our pop culture well you know one of, the reasons, time, one, of the, one of the reasons why is look at where where the music of africa came from which was west africa and where did all the slave trade come from west africa exactly they all came over here at the same time when the Europeans went over to Africa and uh, they had an influence because they brought the guitar and then the guitar, you know, transformed the, the African uh, music experience. So it, it, it does, it, it's been a, a little bit of back and forth, but I really, the, the strength of, or the, the, the real uh, predominant uh, rhythms that that we you know see from the the, the Afro-Cuban uh, influence uh, were were really they've evolved from there. So. Does that sound like a fun exercise? Cool. There was an awful lot of, a lot of different styles in the music that you played. Like you could hear jazz, you could hear Latin, you could hear funk, you could hear, also hear reggae influence as well. There was, there was yeah. an awful lot of different styles. Well, that's uh, where I started, I, I started losing hair over thinking about, uh, you know, where, where, how do I narrow this down into something that we can do as, you know, kind of a, a coherent direction. And that's why I just, I picked uh Felicute because it, it, it's, it's interesting enough in that we can play with horns, uh, but it's also got the, all the rhythmic and kind of some modern, if you want to say funk, um, you know, it, it just write an interesting cue, tune into the into the vibe of what they're doing, and let that inspire you into doing something interesting. That that that's what I'm saying. That, that that's kind of the 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 tip of the arrow, if you will, and then bring that back into your own experience and try not to torture dolphins in the meantime. Anyways, that that was a beautiful piece, by the way, that you did. Um, so that's it. That's uh, you know I wanted to keep it relatively simple and uh, and I and I think it'll be a fun experiment. Uh, please, Miguel, you had a question. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, please, uh, that music that we are listening right now, when it was released? What I didn't hear the question. Where when was it? released the music? Uh, so so these, when I can, right? these are probably around. I want to say uh, 60s, 70s. 70s, okay. yeah. I'm looking at uh, the same thing of Felicuti on Apple Music, and they're all the early 70s. There's a couple of 80s. 75, yeah. Mm -hmm. Fits right in with what was going on in our culture. Exactly, yep. Exactly. Gil Scott Hearn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, not quite, that funkadelic happened after that. That happened a little bit later, but it's like I don't know. I mean, mid seventies. I mean, it's these are parallel things, right? I mean, there's a lot of cross things. Oh, well, yeah. Think of think of uh, you know the funkadelic uh, George Clinton. You know, hung out. Think of him connecting with Felicute 
and uh, Dr. John <laughs> kind of merged them together into, you know, created his, his, his vibe. But you know, that a lot of that funk stuff was it's, it's long jams on the, you know, a couple chords, make it, what can you do with it? So, and, and they would do some interesting things, Sharon. Yeah, Chris. Um, yeah, this is this is going to be interesting and fun. And I do have the West Africa thing on my contact, so that's exciting. Yeah. But I just wanted to ask you: You're a drummer, and do you find that this music has kind of weird polyrhythms underneath it? Should we try to do something more like twelve eights or you know some other kinds of meters? What would you recommend? I wouldn't. I would. I mean, I wouldn't um, say weird, but um, okay. I would say interesting. One of the things that uh, probably the most predominant, like like you would mention, is a 12-8 kind of yep. thing. So they're yep. using the triplets dot, like dot, 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 or even a, a syncopation, dot, 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 you know, I mean, it's a, it's a. Well, six, two, and four stuff, right? Yeah, exactly. So uh, I would, I, what I would I would encourage you to do listen to if you're going to pull up the West African, you know, Oh, I can put down a button and I got a groove. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. Listen to it. Use it for inspiration. Ching, ching, tika, ah, ka, ka, boom, boom, ka, ti, ti. You know, it's going to have a, have a kind of a thing. Ching, ke, 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 ta. It's got different rhythms, you know, kind of all playing with each other. Take that stop and then go play the one instrument for your group play it because you're gonna you're gonna internalize it a lot easier you know okay. i mean i go in and i do the one buttons all the time when i'm creating stuff because i, I played it it's like i don't need to play it i know how to play it but th the point is that if you really want to internalize this and get those rhythms so you can just feel them you know hand hand sharing a doom back at a at a picnic and she's gonna start jamming because she just feels it because you know she knows it right you're gonna know yep. what to play yeah. Um, so pull that out and, um, and, and, and use that as, as an exercise to inspire you, but then don't play that, play that in yourself Got because it. that's how you're really going to, you're going to really get the rhythms and feel them. And, uh, and then, um, I think there's a lot of fun. I love the little riffs in the bass lines and, right. the, um, exactly. and, and, the, and the guitar, uh, riffs. I love those. Those are really fun. And the same thing with the horns. Um, you know, the, there's, uh, uh, and, and this was one of the things I thought was interesting, you know, when they, and and I'm still studying this, this is, this is a Pandora's box of, of stuff to, to learn and, and, and experience. And some of you have probably already even gone down this rabbit hole and, and uh, you know, before me and, and, and studying in this area, I know Carl had mentioned some things about this as well. Um, but the, uh, when, when the guitar came over, um, they they i think they they had a broader uh ability to be more harmonic so they uh they had an instrument now that would that you know could transpose keys and that sort of thing they can't really do that with like a cora is pretty much one key i think um you've got you you've got a, a scale you can work with but you have you don't have i don't know it's not as uh i mean are, are they chromatic? I don't, I don't exactly. I, that's an interesting point. I want to learn how a Cora is tuned, but, um, but I'm thinking that it's more around a, a few keys, maybe in some pentatonic scales, as opposed to, uh, as to having kind of the full harmonic range that a guitar has. Like, most, I, uh, go ahead. Most of the idiophones are, are tuned pentatonic, minor pentat or pentatonic. Yeah. Now we were talking, how many people have, uh, uh, one of these guys. What 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 did you show us? Mike, what, Mike, Mike had great? one. What is it? What is it? Uh, Gotta show it again. What is it? I'm gonna show it again. Well, again, you are being very uh, sneaky. It's a uh, Mbira, uh, Mbira, essentially. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, oh yeah, so like a kalimbo type of thing, right? Kalimbo. So kalimbo. Yeah, I've got a check here. Yeah, kalimbo is a term that evolved it was it's a really yeah. called an ambira okay so this is this is one version of it and and uh, mike showed us an interesting one i got a newer version of it um uh, that i was playing with and this one is actually tuned 
Is that are these? So, this is tuned, but are these pictures taken from the book? I was just curious. These pictures in the in the slide up here. Yeah, that's from like an educate. You probably use that book in your class when you were teaching. <laughs> uh, Generally, they called it the agogo in in uh, in uh, in African is uh, gonkokwi. Gonkokwi. Yeah, at least in Ghana instruments. There are there, no. The, again, the, this... when it when it's used in Latin American music, it's a go again a go go. Yeah, there's there's so many different names for so many of these instruments. And that was one of the things that when the Europeans came over and started uh, coming up with naming conventions for all these instruments, uh, all the various categories, it, it was fascinating because they all had such, you know, they're, they're, this uh, Imbira, uh, essentially the, the, the more traditional uh, Imbiras, uh, were played like in kind of inside of a gourd, and they. Um, I had a whole list of videos. I was I, I my system crashed. And I lost all my bookmarks for that. Well, Drag, that's anyway, that's but, what the shaker ray is made from too. Yeah, well, the shaker rays are uh, with around with the you know the gourd with the beads with little, with the yeah. shells or whatever on the outside and netting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and there's all kinds of variations of these. I mean, again, it's a Pandora's box on each instrument. You know, and 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 each tribe uh, in early Africa, they all had their own kind of their signature sound and their signature kind of uh, groove. It'd be kind of like one, you know, a, a tribe was a band like, right. You know, it was, they had their they had their groove, their own little their own little sound. And uh, like, you know, the difference between various bands that we would listen to today um, Is Oh, oh, that that igui is like a log drum. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. But they're 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 um they're all diff they're different pitches too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The variety of them. Yeah. So yeah, this I I you know it's each one of these I was you know this, I just grabbed something simple here because um you can go on you go on google and there's just so many variations of each one the imbira is what i was looking at the most and there's all kinds of different ones that's awesome okay now that was part of the experiment or the 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 thing today how many of you have any african have african interest instruments uh or of african origin instruments in your collection right now i used to when i was teaching but i don't anymore i it's had a story. Right? They a gonkokwi cool. and all kinds of xylophones, but not you know, not African xylophones, ones that were made by companies that sort of mimic, cool. but they're exp they're really expensive. They're really expensive. Yeah. Well, there's uh, but I have seen the African ones too, but there's I also the new uh. I forget the name of it. It's 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 round. It's got the little tongues in it. What are those called when you're? Uh, eh, I should know that. But anyways, there's there's so many like different drums. Of, what's that? Like a wood wood drum with the the nut. But there's the wooden ones, and now they have the new ones where it's like a steel drum, and you're and you're tapping on it in different yeah. places, and that's all tuned. Those that that and those are all evolved. I mean, the steel drum isn't originally, you know. A, traditional uh african instrument it, it grew out of you know uh influence of you know they some oil, of the coolest, oil, petrol, oil cans yeah but so some of the coolest instruments are and and i love this when i find a facebook video uh some of the coolest instruments are some some guy took a gas can and cut it off and put a couple of strings on it and he's jamming man it's like awesome he's yeah. making an instrument uh, so that he can uh, express his musicality, and that's just beautiful. You know, there, some kid playing a a drum kit out of all these bucket things and and whatever that he put together. Their their pans are expensive too, real expensive. You oh talk yeah, thousands of dollars. Yeah, to get a good one that's tuned, yeah, you know, real, real ones. Like the the difference between so like this and this, and this is a modern version. 
they have the the more traditional versions of these this kalimba okay uh this one's tuned to uh chromatically which i haven't figured out how to play but it, it has a real beautiful are you hearing can you hear that can you hear this you no. need to turn on the original sound no. again put it down on something hang on a second. Turn, you need to turn on the original sound oh hang on I'm going to stop sharing, boom. And then I have to turn on original sound on here. Can you hear this? Yeah. yeah. So it's it's a beautiful sound. Yeah, it's beautiful. Is it made of rosewood or what in the back? Yeah, this one is. And it's a solid one. I just got this a couple, you know, like a week ago. So I just because I was playing around. But this one, oops, come on. That's nice. The drag is, like I said, I, I I put this behind my seat in my van, and I and it bent them so they don't. But it used this. This used to just, ooh, oh, it's just beautiful singing. It was it was awesome. So I never, I could never get it tuned quite right afterwards, unfortunately. But, but they're they're beautiful instruments. I mean, I've got a couple of them in my collections that I can can play with if I'm going to do something, you know, musically. Mostly because they're in tune already, and I, you know, that's. But I can have that sound, that 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 timbre. So you you can play around with those kinds of things as well. Just you know, set out a journey to. Uh, explore you know the rhythms and and stylistically in in uh, a Fedicute's zone uh, but then play with your libraries and find out find different sounds that you think uh, would be interesting and compatible and you know if you want to write this uh, in in a in a well I don't want to I don't want to give too free a rain because you know Rafael will turn it into a trailer with a boom in there, but <laughs> but you know, let, let's try to stay as close to to what would sound pretty, uh, you know, felicute ish. What is so are, it? We, uh, are we limited to a 12 minute length? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, no, 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 two and a half minutes. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I'm saying. You know, do a consent, you know, make it a cue, something that you guys can use, uh, as part of your library if you're gonna if you're gonna try and, uh, you know, what's an African sub boom? Yeah, that's a well. It's like one of the, so. You did you see my comment on your on your song, uh, Stuart? Krakatoa. I I said well, you, oh, should, I sh you should put in uh, put it in a little bit, you know, lower. Grab something to throw underneath. But I said, you know, my ears might be, you know, tricking me here because I've been listening to Sonic Booms all day doing a trailer. So yes, <laughs> yeah. So like, where, where's that reference point? Where are your where yes. where's your ears fried? <laughs> But anyways, uh, I, I'm going to wrap up the uh, this part of uh, our presentation. I think we have a good exercise that will be fun. That's and hopefully good. you guys will go down that rabbit hole and, and, and find some interesting things about African music. There's so much there. Um, unless you guys have any other questions. Cool. Thank you, Pybox. Thank you, Slack. For allowing us to use your tools to collaborate, communicate, and have fun uh, with this here on the Harmony uh, Chat, Composer Exchange, and we'll see you next time.